This is the 20th season of Bass Talk Live. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Strike King Lures, Aftco, Pro Guy Batteries, Pro, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Beatdown Outdoors, and Sunline. BTL, coming at you. Good morning and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live. We're going to talk about bass fishing. Another thrilling and exciting week in the world of professional bass fishing. Man, they just keep racking out mega weights. This is the year of the mega weights. We've had 130 pounds. We've had, which is the second heaviest elite series tournament win ever this year uh with what happened with trey mckinney on lake fork and then uh and then the last elite on harris chain actually two ago because they went back to back was a little bit down and then it comes back and they're like oh they're only going to get two days of practice on the saint john's fisheries a little bit different the fish aren't really on the beds this one's going to be kind of all over the map and then Corey johnson 93 six wins by 21 pounds gets his long overdue first elite series title. And we're going to get right into our guest today. Cause he has some important things to take, uh, to take care of. So he's only got about a half hour with us. We'll dive into this in the second half of the show, but I do want to point out, uh, that since 2020, there have been six Canadians that have now won on either the open the Elite Series, or the Classic level, starting with Chris Johnston's uh, win on the St. Lawrence River in 2020, then Gussie won on the Tennessee River in 21, then Corey Johnson won an Open on Thousand Islands in 21, then Cooper Gallant won the Bass Master Open on Cherokee in 22, then Gussie wins the Classic in 23, then Corey Johnson just wins on the St. John's River in 24 and they're going up north and there's three canadians in the two johnson brothers and cooper who are going to have a shot at the angler of the year in 2024 so it is uh it is a good time to be a canadian tournament bass angler uh let's get to today's guest live from memphis tennessee and he's uh, he's getting back into the tournament game folks uh if you follow btl if you followed his journey you know it has been a wild and testing past three, four months for Miles Berghoff and the Berghoff family. Uh, and we've had him on regularly, and he's back. Miles, thanks for joining us from St. Jude. What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. I'm about ready to move up to Canada, dude. I, I was just going to say, I, I'd love to see a breakdown of like uh, the winner's between states you know it could it be that that canada is getting more wins than any one part or any one state in the u.s that would be wild to see like over the past and you, you'd have you could break it down to kind of suit whatever right yeah, yeah act yeah. that you want to do but it would be interesting to see if like oh more canadians have won than texans or alabamans or Florida. you know to traditional right. what you would think of tournament fishing Hot what spots. what always what always got me about Canada is that I didn't realize how versatile you could be just fishing Canada, but you can. I mean, these guys are going obviously down to Florida, you know, and and crushing it down there and everywhere in between. Actually, Florida doesn't uh, surprise me as much as some of the other states because Florida has a lot of those natural lakes that that um, I think would be pretty similar to what you'd see up north. But like, I don't know, man. Those Canadians. Yeah. It is the other the thing that is interesting though is five out of those six wins were you know two were on the uh St. Lawrence River with uh right. Chris Johnson in 2020 and then uh Corey in 21 in the open. So that's that's understandable. I'm I'm shocked right. it took that long for them to get the wins, but you look at what uh Cooper did on Cherokee and then the two wins by Gussie on the Tennessee River and Corey's blowout win this past week was the first largemouth tournament that a canadian has right. won the other five were right. smallmouth even though you know the other two were in tennessee and you talk about how they're a different strain than the northern fisheries but man those guys like get it yeah they totally do they're very versatile no doubt all right i i uh i talked with you i said 
you were like, man, uh, I'm going to tow my boat. I'm going to get it on the water. And I said, why don't you come on, give us a little bit of an update on uh, what's going on with the Berghoff family, with Riley at St. Jude. And then uh, it's probably been a while since you've been on a show and talked about fishing. So I have noticed yeah. on your YouTube <laughs> channel that you have been slaughtering them <laughs> every yeah. time oh, you, yeah. you hit the lake. So let's get the the uh, uh, let's kick things off with the, the update. How are you doing? The Berghoff family, so- Riley with St. Jude. Yeah, so we're doing we're doing great over here, you know, considering and, uh, you know, Riley just started her fourth uh, cycle of chemo on Thursday. And that one that one was I'll be honest, it was kind of like every once in a while we kind of get kicked in the gut a little bit. And it's just like, okay, this isn't going to be as easy as like it feels right now. So it always seems like it kicks up another level. Uh, and she was, she had three different chemos that she had to do that first day and it it hit her kind of hard. You know, she she could just tell she was pretty pale and just, um, you know, just not feeling good, but now she is, you know, her colors back and she's like, she's just running around like crazy. So, uh, she's doing really, really well. You know, we're really worried that just after that first day of chemo, it would just go downhill from there, but she's really just bounced back, you know, it, it getting three different chemotherapy drugs, uh, you know, at the same time has got to be just <laughs> brutal. So, um, so she's doing really, really well. And the last imaging that we got, so we, after the second cycle of chemo before the third, uh, we got some MRI and PET scan um done and uh, some imaging done and and the uh, imaging showed we didn't get like a percentage but it was it was huge progress like huge shrinkage of the of the cancer um in in as far as like the primary tumor and what's in her bones and bone marrow so we're we're very very um hopeful and uh we've got another round of like tests and stuff like that after this fourth cycle. So um, we're moving in the right direction. And and obviously we can't be more grateful uh, for St. Jude's, man. They've just been incredible during this process. But Riley is doing really good. And uh, so we're that make that makes it way easier for for, you know, both Katie and I too. So yeah, but yeah. I know it's a I mean, we're talking years long process here. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time yeah. that I've had you on since all this has gone down where it feels like <laughs> you're actually like able to breathe and take a deep breath and are in a little bit of a routine now. Because I haven't, you know, I've, I yeah. mean, I don't see you in person except when we're on the, yeah. the show or, or on the show. But, dude, you, you like look look great and it sounds and feels like you're kind of in a little bit of a routine now. Yeah, it it feels that way. Um and yeah, it, 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 I mean, that's pretty much exactly what's going on is, is that we have found our routine, you know, once we got placed in the target house here, which for those of you at home don't, that don't know how the housing works for St. Jude, they've got several different housing units. You've got target house, you've got Domino's village and uh, Ronald McDonald house, as well as tri Delta. Those are all places that they could put you for, for long-term or short, ter- short-term housing. And so once we got into long-term housing, we could kind of get into our own routine. You know, we had a kitchen and we've got all that stuff that we need to, to kind of get into that, uh, you know, get into the swing of things. And so, you know, it, like right now, as we speak, we've got some nurses uh, that just walked in. I can hear them and they're taking uh, Riley's labs. So it is really just a every day, every week is pretty much the same routine. We know which days we're supposed to be going to the hospital. Like today, we're going to go to the hospital in a little bit um, to, to get her labs reviewed and all that stuff. And uh, and then also because we know what our schedule is, I, I am, like you said, able to get out a little bit, which has been excellent. You know, I've got some wonderful sponsors that would support me throughout the year regardless of what i was able to do but to be able to get out and like do some content on youtube and stuff like that that has been uh you know very helpful for uh you know maintaining my sanity i guess okay how have you been able to get out because you follow your if you follow your youtube channel here i'll pull it up right now we're talking uh 
as much as I like to say it, Carolina rig fish, <clears throat> hop water fish, <laughs> yeah. conning fish, chatterbait fish, all sorts of stuff. And I, I had called you what a, like a month ago and I was like, how did you have all this content in the can miles? And you're like, dude, I don't like, this is my job. This is what I do. This is important. Yeah. And I get to go fishing and catch fish. So how is this, how is this happening? Like, cause I wouldn't have thought like, Oh, you're in Memphis, but it seems like you're catching more yeah. fish than you've ever caught before. Yeah. Uh, it, it kind of feels like cheating. So, uh, I am super, super thankful to, uh, you know, a couple people out here, Mark Rose, actually, I contacted him to see if there's any buddy in the area that he knows that I could keep uh, my boat at. And he's just like, throw it in my garage. He cleared out a the whole portion of his garage for me to keep my boat. Uh, and uh, so I can go over there anytime I want and grab the boat. But he also got me access to a, 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 a friend's lake. It's like a 200 acre lake. And so I get to go out there and, and just pretty much be by myself and catch all these bass it's it's pretty incredible it's and uh it, it's awesome because uh it allows me i only get maybe one or two days a week if everything's going perfect right you know if, if something happens with riley her numbers are down and it's all hands on deck fishing is definitely not a mm -hmm. priority in that scenario but um if i do get to get out my one or two days a week it's like so easy for me to get all the content I need because I'm doing a video a day, um, you know, on YouTube. That's that's my goal is to maintain that video a day, um, which obviously is helping my sponsors and it's just helping me, you know, just kind of stay, uh, you know, stay fresh in the business a little bit. But uh, but yeah, it is a little bit of a stock pond situation. I'm not going to lie. It's not like <laughs> it's it's wrong. Not there's like, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. And I'm very thankful for, for yeah, you know, Mark and and all those guys that all the the property owners that own that lake. So have they are they like they get on the beds there? Like have you been able to sight fish them there or is it you know, I kind of missed this the sight fishing uh, deal. Like I went out there this last week and the bluegill were already starting to bed like heavy. I got uh, gotcha. but I I got such a great uh pre-spawn bite going and then the crazy thing was like you'd expect to be able to go catch them on everything but if they don't want a technique they're not going to eat it like it, it's still it, it's still like you can still uh, you know figure out obviously it's broader as far as like what they will eat but if it's something they, they don't want at all they're still not going to eat it so it's not like i can go out there and and throw just anything you still have to actually fish for those fish there's just more of them and they're less pressured overall uh so ardent listeners of btl know that i talk ad ad nauseum i don't know if that's the right word i talk frequently about <laughs> right. the uh dick highly saint jude bass classic more <laughs> because it was uh postponed because of high water last year so it happened in right. like september october and then it's usually the first week of may so we've really had it two in the last six months i know uh the btl and saint jude uh, combo shirts that go to raise money for this. We are over $3,000. I'm getting the final Amazing. numbers exactly this week and we'll show it. But, uh, that tournament takes place the first weekend in May, the third, fourth and fifth up in Wabasha, Minnesota. And that was not even on your radar. I would say a month ago, two months ago, no. as far yeah. as when you would get to fish, travel, go, but, uh, you're signed up for the tournament. You're towing your rig up there, and you're going to be part of that event for the in the in their 26th season of the Dick Highly St. Jude Bass Classic. Look at that smile on your face. You got to be pumped that you're Dude. you're going to get to fish a derb. I get to fish a tournament. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, yeah. So I I had you you had told me about it and all that stuff, and and I kind of didn't really take anything seriously or really think about it until about a month ago, or you know. Uh, a couple weeks ago, really. And finally, I'm like, I got to sign up. I got to stop postponing things because I, I find that I'm postponing things and just kind of uh, not doing things on time if I did, just don't jump into it uh, during this whole process. But yeah, I signed up for it. Um, uh, m my buddy Scott and I, and Scott is actually, uh, Scott Kenninger, he's, he's uh, one of the Matt Steppen household. Uh, okay. He's uh, Matt Steppen's brother-in-law. So um we're gonna go out and actually go uh, fish that and originally we we're just gonna fish out of his boat and uh he was having 
you know, a, a little bit of electrical issues and it, which I'm sure that it could have got fixed, but I was like, you know, it made me think I already had my flight in my, uh, my rental car, but I was like, man, I need to just cancel all that and just drag my boat up there, you know, cause getting a good road trip just sounds lovely right now, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, so I'm going to be driving up and I might get a half day of practice if they let you practice on, on Friday. But I, I might I not even get do. any practice. Okay. I, yeah, yeah, I might. Who knows? It it is a twelve hour drive, so it's 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 a little lengthy. If anything happens on that drive, I might not make practice. But I'm excited. Oh, you got forward facing there. sonar though, right? So you don't need any practice. You yeah. yeah right. Get out in the river and just drop it down, and just wait till they <laughs> swim past in that main river current. Just throw a minnow at them. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> but is That's it? it I mean, that's a good sign, though, that you're excited about fishing or thinking about it, because I know fishing uh, for a yeah. lot of people, um, it, it, we're in a different boat because, you know, I, yeah. I do a show about it every single day. The industry is how I make my living. I fish the opens on the side. You are a, a tournament angler by trade. That's how you support your yeah. family, have supported it with it. But uh, there's also a lot of perspective here. And I know talking to you that, you know, fishing hasn't been on the forefront, but it, is this are you seeing, are you able to, with the stage you're in now, a little bit of therapeutic for you, or a little bit of, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's a desire to get back on the water a little bit because of everything that's happened or just talk about that yeah. dynamic. Cause I know fishing is different for everyone. Some people use it as a getaway. Some people use it to put things off that they're supposed to be doing. It's a whole bunch right. of different variety. Yeah. You know what? <clears throat> I will be completely brutally honest here. Um, during this process, the whole, the, the main thing that's kind of come from it is like how much I enjoy just being home, you know, with, with my family. Um, you know, I love tournament fishing so much. It's been my life, you know, since, since high school, right. It's been my mm -hmm. only sole focus in life. I've had such a, uh, you know, a great time, you know, building skills and things like that. And, 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 you know, climbing the ladder in tournament fishing. And I want to get back to that for sure. But honestly, I don't think about it all that much. Uh, I think about providing for my sponsors, the people that are still, you know, paying me. And that's why the YouTube thing is such a big deal. Like I don't even really get out quote unquote fun fishing as much. I I'm, I'm out there for a purpose to, to do some great content. But as far as like tournament fishing, I've been watching some, you know what? It was crazy. I started watching, I don't, I'm not a golf guy. I've never really played a full round of golf in my life, but I watched that like live or what was it? Not live, uh, that full swing. You ever watch yeah. that on, yeah. oh dude, I just did a whole show so on many, full swing. so many parallels to, to bass fishing. And that's, that actually got me more excited than anything in, in getting me Jones to get out there on the water and and tournament fish and compete so there is a part of me that's like below the surface but it's kind of you know right now i'm my focus is so uh you know uh i'm just so focused on on riley and my wife during this process i really haven't been thinking as much about tournament fishing as a lot of people would say i know that sounds bad but uh yeah, that's not, that's not not bad not but i, I mean yeah, no, I, I miss tournament fishing, but man, it has been so awesome to be able to spend time with my family during the, I almost feel like this has been a, a true gift. As long as everything works out in the long run for, for Riley, like this has been a real uh, gift to be able to, to realize, to recognize like how time at home with my family is so important. And uh, so you know, uh, that, that's kind of how I'm treating it as maybe it's a coping mechanism. I don't know what it is because uh, I, I certainly do miss tournament fishing when I watch. I, I, I can't hardly watch tournament fishing live because I'm like, oh, my gosh, just the when people are calling fish. Dude, it's a, it's amazing. Just the act of calling. I'm like, oh, my gosh, just sliding a three and a half pounder in the live well would be so nice right now it's it's oh, you're gonna get to do that because this, that's those fish up there it's a Hopefully. six fish limit up there but you got the large mouth and the small mouth up there at uh water shop but yeah so yeah. uh four days ago i had gleason on and the title of it on btl yeah. is bass fishing and the masters and i we went on like a 45 minute tangent oh, cool. on how 
bass fishing is the perfect conduit, especially right now with what's going on and all the different back storylines for a yeah. professional uh independent docu series team to come in because it's not like Netflix sends someone to do it. You have like a team of professionals that come in. This is what they do. They do it, then they either sell it to Netflix or they take, you know, do advertising for it on that. But a professional like a full swing production with the professional fish, right. it, there are so many dang parallels. It's unbelievable. Oh my gosh, it's wild. It really <laughs> is wild. I was I was listening to the because I got off my like two years before this all happened. Like the end of last year, I told you this before. I felt normal. I felt back again. Like I was ready to to just go crush it. But two years before that, you know, 2022 and 2023 were terrible tournament fishing years. The worst I've ever had. I was kind of in a slump. And then I felt like I got out of that. And I'm watching these guys. I forget which golfers they are. Um, but I, th- like a lot of the episodes focus on, you know, those, those, uh, you know, competitors that are kind of in that lull and like they're, yep. what they're going through. Like, and I was like, I literally can feel what he's feeling, you know, and, uh, and also on the other side too, you know, when you're playing good, when you're fishing good, uh, there's, there's just so many things that are very similar with golf and fishing. It's crazy speaking of fishing good so you're going up to uh i think it's what pools four and five or pools five and six in on the mississippi river the first week of may i've always struggled with river fisheries current driven fisheries it's always been difficult for me talk (laughs) about how you plan on breaking down uh, a difficult fishery specifically if you have yeah. anything like on a current driven fishery to where you put your boat in and need to find fish fast like right are there any like raw laws rules kind of rules of thumb that you go by on rivers to locate fish early and quickly this time of year no i treat because i don't you know as much uh, experiences that I have now on the Tennessee river. I don't know how much of that always translates over to something like the Mississippi river. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like it always does to me. Yeah. Obviously the fish relate to the, the current, uh, fairly similar or, or the same, but, um, I really, I'm going to treat this like any other tournament and I'm really going to just simplify it and dumb it down and, and do go to areas that, that, I recognize even if I haven't been there, they just feel like something that I'd like to fish. Uh, I'm probably, I mean, the great thing is that that time period, there's going to be some fish, uh, you know, in and around the spawning phase. Right. So uh, I can find some areas that are out of the, out of the current and focus on those. And that's kind of my goal. I've picked out a couple on Google earth that I'm like, yeah, these, these are legit to have a mixture of a lot of different things. And that's what I look for a lot of different times uh, going to a new lake is I look for a area that represents so many different types of cover and structure. So I can pick apart that cover and structure in that area and maybe, you know, broaden everything and, and start checking out some more areas once I figure out what they're holding on. But like there's, there's a certain areas that I've got picked out that I want to, practice that have a lot of docks they've got a lot of riprap so a lot of man-made um you know structure uh lots of uh you know oxbows and and backwaters and that also have large flats too Mm -hmm. and so just trying to find a a combination of all those different ingredients um that way hopefully you know, I can figure out what they're holding on at that time. But, you know, that during May, you should be able to find some small mouth or large mouth spawning. So hard cover that's out of the current is kind of, you know, what I have on my mind. But that's likely going to change once we get up there. So one of the things that I found, I think this was my second or third year fishing it, is right. um, there's a couple guys on that stretch of river, and I'm learning on all stretches, like that don't miss on rivers yeah like they never miss it doesn't matter whether the water's high whether it's the fall whether it's the spring whether it's spawning regardless but i mean there's a couple dudes who fish this tournament who will come in with six for 23 (coughs) for 21 to 25 pounds and they've done it for the last 15 to 20 years they're the guys to beat they're always in the top five 
it's insane. It, is there more of a home field advantage than a river system or in the fishing world, in your opinion, is an intricate river system the biggest home field advantage in tournament fishing? I think that it's one of the biggest. I don't know if it's the biggest, uh, but it is 100% one of the biggest because uh, the, the river fish, man, they are so susceptible to so many different variables you know, throughout the year. And if you aren't well versed in how to react to each of those variables, um, you know, you're going to have a hard time adjusting. And mm -hmm. uh, so I, I do think that that guys that like river rats, guys that are constantly out on that river, they have a distinct advantage. And, uh, you know, really, I don't that doesn't that doesn't bother me at all, because like I'm not even really getting a, a good, honest practice in. Uh, so I, I'm just more or less worried about not wrecking my boat and putting it on a wing dam. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm treating this tournament as a good exercise and like just showing up and, and trying to figure it out as fast yeah. as possible. So like competing against those guys, I don't even know if that's on the, you know, that's really on the radar, you know, as much as just getting up there and, and uh, doing the best that I possibly can. But they, there are some hammers up there that, like you said, they do not miss. It seems like every river, like in your, so we talk about it on the Arkansas River too, specifically uh, out of Three Forks, out of the Arkansas right. River pool there, and then going down into Kerr. I wonder, what is, what would you define if you call a guy a river rat? You hear that term a ton in fishing. Right. What is your definition of a river rat? Oh gosh, it's just somebody that, that just lives out there on the river you know it's just constantly fishing the river and 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 really exploring you know those river systems you know they're not just in one pool that's not a river rat that you got you got guys that are are you know if you're down in lacrosse you're you're exploring seven eight and nine you're 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 really know what's going on at all times and and really know the landscape that's kind of what i think of as a guy that's a that's a river rat just and maybe it's a group of guys you know a lot of times it is a group of guys that that know the the it, it seems like more so than regular like reservoirs river fisheries just have uh, attract groups of of anglers that kind of pool their knowledge together to kind of uh you know figure out a a fishery that's kind of what i've experienced you know you've got like chris grow he considers himself a river rat and and uh you know there's there's a bunch of guys up there that they just live on those river those that river and just go up and down into the different pools and everything so that's, I, like I don't it. know. That's my explanation. Because I made a list. So I think, I think if when I think of River Rat, I think of a guy with multiple boats in his backyard. Ooh, yeah. That's I think a, of a guy who's got a, uh, if he needs to make a run, two pools has, has the glitter rocket, the sparkly right. fiberglass mm -hmm. that he can lock through and make the run, but also has either <laughs> the, uh, the jet drive or one that he can plow into backwaters. I think of a guy yeah. who's like a little rough around the edges. Like he's not suit. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't care that a he's got wire. a mud line, mud line on his boat or like the, the rods stay on the front deck for weeks or months at a time. He's not a guy who changes out his line every single day. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that. When I think of river rats, I think a, a, a guy who can grind out a 12 pound limit and be like just as happy as the guy who catches a 30 pound sack. I mean, that's what I think of when I think of river rat. Yeah. I, so. I think of somebody that that could could definitely knows where to hide things if they had to. Yeah, <laughs> and, and someone who has good <laughs> stories. Have you ever met a river rat who doesn't have good stories? Because all oh river gosh, rats it's... have gotten stuck, sunk something, gotten into oh, somewhere yeah. where they shouldn't have. Had to go have. camping. Had to had, go yeah, camping had to camp. A, yeah. Like <laughs> all, like you get around river rats and they start telling story. Well, one time, you know, when the water yeah. got they they end up in the craziest places. Uh, that's true and I've, most I've of been... them are generational if you think about yeah. it most of them are you know oh my dad fished this river or i had an uncle that taught me on this river we grew up next to like most of it's it's hard to become a river rat. i think you're born right. into into that scenario i agree i agree it's a very <sighs> unique group of of anglers that's for sure uh, all right well i'm gonna let you go uh i know you guys have to get over for your routine yeah, yeah. 
weekday activities. Uh, a couple things. Hopefully, uh, I will see you on the fourth and fifth uh, in Wabasha. I, I I I don't know what best case. So I'm flying out Friday after the open on right. Uh, Logan you mean Martin. Saturday? No, Saturday. if I miss the cut, and I'm a <laughs> statistics guy, Miles, so I'm just looking at my statistics. So statistically, I have a pretty high chance of missing the cut. However, it is spotted bass, and it is a post-spot deal. So there's a chance there. If I don't, then I won't be able to make it. Adam has to have a guy who jumps in. Otherwise, I got a flight out Friday that gets there early Saturday. I'll fish Saturday, Sunday, and I'll see you Saturday at uh, at takeoff in Wabasha. Um, second is, and I do want to uh, mention this, there is a direct link, and uh, I know we've asked you guys for donations for the Burgoff family, for the St. Jude t-shirts, for all sorts of stuff. Uh, one last thing, if you guys wanted to donate, you didn't get a t-shirt, you haven't had an opportunity, here's the last chance since Miles signed up last uh, late for this tournament. Uh, there is a direct link to his uh, his St. Jude team. So all this money goes yep. directly to his team, and then the takeoff number is based on how much money you've raised. So right now, we got you, Miles. We're taking off ahead of you, Bart and I. Yep. Don't follow us. <clears throat> where 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 are you at? Uh, I what do you, what we're do you have? we're sh- right at twenty thousand right now, I believe. Oh, like within, amazing. and I have a couple guys that I've got to be I like, would- hey, if we're a couple hundred short to jump in, yeah, I'm super proud of that. And that is uh, all Crappie Chronicles and BTL supporters. It could not be right. more proud to do 20 K, yeah, especially after asking for money in October. So, but there's a direct yeah. link in that. If you want to jump in, you can see like all the donators there that goes directly to, uh, miles team, uh, for the Dick Highly St. Jude bass classic. Yeah. So, it doesn't go yeah. to, it doesn't go to us. It goes no, no, no. That's a hundred percent goes to St. Yeah, Jude. Yeah, that's yeah. the same it place to- that everybody who raises money for this event goes to that at like, that's, you know, how they raised 1.1 million last year and over 7 yeah. million total over the past 25 I- years. So, I really wish I understood how it all worked before. I honestly didn't even think that I had no idea that you, uh, that teams raised the donations for St. Jude for, for this, but it's, it is completely, it's amazing uh, the way that they've set this up. And so uh, I'd love some, some more help to raise as much money as possible for St. Jude. Cause they are just, they're, they're performing miracles every single day and uh but yeah this this next year you know from here on out i'm going to be starting the fundraising efforts much much earlier we literally just started like a week and a half ago so uh, you know hopefully we can get up to i'm hoping 10 grand is is in our future for saint jude at least that should give you a top half top half takeoff yeah there's some teams that yeah. are just ridiculous they're like 40 50k yeah, yeah, I, I saw that the but, other day. I was like, gosh, dude, man. It was, uh, it was good chatting fishing with you a little bit. Yeah, good chatting fishing with you, too. It, it, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm a little bit rusty chatting about fishing, but uh, it felt pretty good. You think you'll have a little adrenaline pumping when that first either four and a half pounds largemouth smokes a frog or smallmouth eats a, eats a plug or a jig in the derby? Dude, I know I will. I know I will. Just driving up there just driving up there with the boat in tow is going to be plenty. I mean, uh, you really think about it. There's, it's such a dramatic change in my life. That's just, Mm -hmm. you know, taking place and just, and really it's only been two months, right? Two and a half months. That's hard to believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It feels like, it feels like it's half a year already. Um, but you know, such a, I've, I've done nothing but tournament fish, for so long and to have it slow down to just a screeching halt like this uh, is super weird, but going and fishing this tournament is something I'm really, really looking forward to and not just getting on the water, but just the whole process. You got the Corgi up in your neck of the woods yet? No, no, he's unfortunately Doppler's still got to live over in uh, the, he's actually at some friend's house uh, on Watts bar. So he's living his best life, eating, uh, you know, goose poop and, and, uh, you know, chasing, <laughs> chasing squirrels. So <laughs> I got you. Yeah, no, you'll, you'll have the adrenaline go. Like I've said before, there's a dude who stands on the rocks, like you idle out, you idle under a little bridge and there's like all this stuff in the morning and they're helping you back in and it's oh, cool. So and then cool. there's this dude who's done it every one and like you idle out and he goes, and, and you get past him, he goes, go. 
and then really? boom, you take oh, out cool. yo dude it's cool you'll see it you'll have to it gives me goosebumps every year i've well, done it like that's his thing it's like very dramatic and stuff so he'll be on the right hand side as you idle out into the main river so do not miss that shot that's the coolest shot of the whole tournament that is so cool yeah i'll, I'll definitely hit that so all right miles thanks for jumping on all right thank you very much matt appreciate you thank you everybody uh hit that link if you get an opportunity 10 even bucks, if it's 20 anything bucks, helps 10 bucks five yeah. bucks 20 bucks whatever it's also deductible the whole nine yards yeah perfect all right see you brother thanks right, for having me you. on all right that is uh miles Berghoff back in the tournament fishing scene but also still combining it is hard to believe that that's only been uh a couple months but up at uh saint jude with the family uh as his like one-year-old daughter goes through cancer uh, but seems to be on a very uh, steady and positive path. So we got a bunch of derbies that went down this past week. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to dive into those derbies. We have uh, our tournaments. There's still some people that don't like when I call them derbies. I just have gotten used to it. It's it's a tournament, tournament competition, professional high-level competition. We had the One Bass uh, Clear Lake Open. We had an MLF Invitational on Kentucky Lake and we had the Bassmaster Elite Series on the St. John's River. I have uh, a couple guys who did a lot of good for themselves heading forward. Some surprising stats. Uh, one of them may be from an Oklahoman who really uh, bumped his game up over the past two weeks with the back-to-back -back Florida events. We have a really cool winner uh, of the Clear Lake One Bass uh, Open and... Uh, a smallmouth fest that went down at the MLF Invitational on Kentucky Lake. It's BTL on a Monday, April 22nd. We'll be back right after this. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler, design, function, and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised, and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry leading design coupled with tournament winning performance. The Puma STS from Basscat. Feel the rush. Gamakatsu, the innovation leader in fish hooks, is launching Nano Alpha technology in 2024. Nano Alpha is a new finish available on Gamakatsu's most popular hook styles. It delivers two times slicker performance, four times better corrosion resistance. Nano Alpha technology makes the world's greatest fish hooks even better in 2024 to help anglers catch more fish. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament yes, bass fishing. Sir. From household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. It's definitely a lot colder today. Man, I really need to make this cut. I need to make up points quick. Positive mental attitude. I hope they stay where I found them. Are they even pulling water? Too far. And I hope nobody else. Man, that's there. too windy. The water is too high. Avco, keeping you comfortable on the outside, no matter how you're feeling on the inside. early morning mentality is your every hour mentality all gas no brakes focus purpose power 
destined for the water, but confident everywhere else. A calming buzz before the storm, the truth of nature itself. You can't catch lightning in a bottle. There's a limit out there, but it's not with your gear. Unrelenting power delivery. Unparalleled weight savings. Keeping you on the water, whether you run a 9-9 or out scoping your best fun. In this rare air, there's power in the silence. It's a mindset, thinking only of the things that matter and freeing your mind from the things that you trust. Get the best patterns backed by tournament data. Start by finding the best 10% of your lake. Know exactly what to look for and what to throw. After that, you just put them in the boat. Try the Deep Dive app today. Look at that beast right there. All right, welcome back, BTL, on a Monday. Uh, a lot of derbies that went on this past week. I kind of ran that down before the break. Let's start. Uh, let's start on the West Coast, and then we'll work to the East Coast because we had winners all the way from Clear Lake in California to the St. John's River in Florida and everywhere in between. Austin Bonjour wins the One Bass uh, Clear Lake Open. Really good turnout for these uh, for these tournaments. You know, the entire uh, field fishes uh, all three days with a triple A angler in the back of their boat. It is a shared weight format. So like if your co-angler catches a six pounder, it counts towards your best five. And then if you catch a six pounder, it counts towards your co-anglers. And then the co-angler has three different pros and you have three different co-anglers kind of works out to where you're not like you have no reason to back boat your triple a they call it triple a instead of a co because you want them to catch fish it all works out in the wash the same guys who you know the guys who really catch them catch them out there and it was also another slug fest there 83 28 uh austin went 33 84 25 41 and 24 03 83 28 to win uh that event i know there's been a lot of stuff that's gone on with leagues and uh trails and getting paid and not getting paid and payouts with stuff that's going on on the West coast. Good to see Austin get the win there. I, uh, I have reached out to him. He does listen to BTL, I believe. And he's all in on jumping on BTL to talk about how he got the job done on clear Lake. Uh, and anytime a guy catches a, almost a 34 pound bag, it's worth having on. Uh, but you know, we're dealing with some time differences in there. So this week, uh, the goal is to get, uh, Austin on the show to talk about that big win out at clear Lake. Also a shout out to the bird man, Kurt dove, uh, who took a little bit of a leap of faith and he's fishing all four of the, uh, like one bass opens or series that they had on the West coast. Billy's done a really good job of, uh, promoting publicizing the payouts, the incentives for that. And then if you also remember one of the cool things that happened, uh, with one bass that was announced either at the end of last year or beginning of this year was they partnered with Bassmaster and the top five anglers in each of these one bass opens earn a, a ticket directly into the Bass Nation National Championship, which there's a, a, a big change in format that went down this year, but that is for the 25 championship because of double qualifiers. Kurt Dove, who I uh, do his youth camp every year and has been on BTL many times, went 1954, 32, 44 in 1986. He finished six, but I think there was a double qualifier. One of the guys turned down the invite. So the Birdman punches his ticket to the 2025 Bass Nation Championship. He is just three days away then from either winning that and getting back on the Elite Series for a third time. Should he choose that? I don't know if he even wants it. He's got a pretty good gig going what he's doing now or... Uh, making the Bassmaster Classic as one of the top three finishers. So, uh, also Ish Monroe, uh, who I do the Open Pros pick him uh, with Andrew Upshaw and Todd Castledine. Uh, every Elite Series tournament, he finished third in that event, seventy-seven forty-seven, uh, and he had a thirty-two pound bag on the final day to jump all the way up into third. So, a lot of good stuff going on out west with uh, One Bass and their tournaments. I would love to jump in and fish those tournaments. I know they got one coming up on. Uh, on Mead, 
Uh, they have the U.S. Open coming up in October also uh, on Mojave. They're just like right after back-to-back Bassmaster Open. So as soon as there's a, a week that I can go out west and jump in one of those, uh, I'm all about it. All right, let's head a little bit more east to the uh, MLF Invitational that took place on Kentucky Lake. Now, I don't know this guy very well, but I, I have watched his stuff. I do know that he grinds and has been grinding for a long time on the YouTube and the tournament scene. But Andrew Nordby wins that tournament 63-5. Uh, if you take into account uh, Milliken's open win and Nordby's win here, these are guys that I would, and I think they would admit, are YouTube guys who obviously also fish tournaments, but are competing against incredibly high level of talent and winning. So congratulations to Andrew Nordby, 63-5. A lot of small mouth weighed in uh, in this event. You have to remember that's a three-day tournament uh, over on the Invitationals, not a four-day tournament. So a little bit over uh, 20 pounds a day. Uh, heavily dominated by smallmouth. Also, the college event that went down just before that was uh, primarily a smallmouth beat down. There were a lot of low, uh, low twenty bags of smallmouth weighed in in that college event with uh, Bassmaster College event with two anglers. Uh, shout out to my buddy Adam Bartuzek, who I am fishing that Dick Highly St. Jude Bass Classic with. He finished fourteenth. Now this is a this was a ballsy move. I haven't talked about this on the on the uh, on the show yet, but I will talk about it because, quite frankly, I thought it was a bad idea. I thought it was a great way to give back money because the payouts on the invitationals are not fantastic. I think it's top thirty get ten grand, and then the next twenty get like eight grand. It's over a five thousand dollar entry fee. Uh, you finish eleventh, you only get ten grand. There's not, it, but it still pays out well. So here's what happened. So last year, Bart fishes the. Uh, the Toyota series there finds a unique pattern, maximizes it, gets a second place finish. So with the invitationals not filling up, they allowed guys to jackpot them this year to get to that 150 boat max. So Bart rolls over the money he gets from the second dumps over 5k and in entry fees into a one-off invitational entry fee, spends a couple grand to get there. So he's like seven grand in on this thing banking that it's on the same lake where he caught him the year before and that he's going to be able to run the same pattern and cash in on it. And I'm like, dude, that's, that's risky, man. Like you're going to give back all the money that you want. It's a one-off. You're not fishing for the points. You're already invested seven K in it. So he goes out and ends up making the cut has a, uh, almost a 20 pound bag, uh, on the second day, catches a five pounder, ends up finishing 14th, $10,000 check, cash his money. $10,000. Quite frankly, I don't think I'd have had the balls to do that. But uh, shout out to Bart. He he was able to kind of use the same thing that he did last year. He had to tweak it a little bit. There was some more pressure on his stuff. I talked to him yesterday, but that was a uh, that was a big league move uh, in his first and only invitational that he's going to fish this year. But he gets the 10K check on that. Uh, also... Let me see if I wrote this down. Yeah, Drew Gill is insanely good. Uh, he finished 10th in this tournament, which was another top 10. And we just got done last week talking about how Jacob Wheeler is eight consecutive top 10 finishes uh, at the professional level. So he finishes 10th. So, so far in his life, this is Drew Gill's life. He has fished 12 events between the Invitationals last year and this year and the BPT. This year, he has eight top tens out of those 12 events, and he's like 21 years old. Eight out of 12. Like, there's guys who fish their entire careers over at uh, MLF or FLW who have made a good living doing this for more than a decade who don't have eight top tens to their name. That's highly impressive. Uh, and the other thing that I find impressive about Drew Gill is if you've listened to the uh, podcast tour that he's been on, and including BTL, he like literally gives his game plan up to everybody. He likes like, here's how I do it. Here's how I find him. Here's how I catch him. Here's the deal. And then he just goes out and quite frankly dominates. So he's leading the angler of the year halfway through the year over on the invitationals. And we touched on it a little bit before. Let's go to Florida for the uh, Bassmaster Elite Series on the St. John's River. 
talked a little bit with Patrick Walters about this last week going in, and he thought that the lack of practice would really impact the field. And really, if it wasn't for the 93 pounds, six ounces uh, that Corey Johnson had, it would have been less than 20 pounds a day. Uh, it would have, I think, second place, and that was Brad Watley, who had a 30-pound bag. Is a heck of a comeback from uh, from Brad, Brad Watley. He had like a 30-pound bag uh, one of the days uh, at Palaka to finish second with 72-4. But like I said, Corey Johnson gets his first Bassmaster Elite Series win, joining his brother uh, Chris Johnston, who won in 2020. He becomes the third Canadian angler to win an Elite Series tournament with uh, Chris in 2020, Gussie in 2023 and Corey in 2024 does the first becomes the first Canadian angler to win an elite series tournament on all largemouth as well. Uh, which is rather impressive, but there were a couple guys that I want to highlight in this Florida swing, because we always talk about the Florida swing. They started the year off on Toledo bend and Lake fork, and it turned the fishing world upside down. It was dominated by rookies, by guys out in the middle with jerk baits and minnows. And people said, Oh my gosh, the tournament world is on its head. It's upside down. Look at these guys who normally catch them or at the bottom, their careers are done. It's over stick a fork in them. Now we're going to Florida where it's going to be dominated by the same guys since it's in April which means that the fish aren't going to be 100% on the beds. It's still going to be dominated by that. But there are a couple guys that really, really did themselves a world good. The first one is a big shout out to Brad Watley, who went back-to-back top 10s. He went 10th on Harris and second on the St. John's River. Coming off, you know, he's he's a Texas guy. So he's familiar with Toledo Bend and Lake Fork, but he finished 89th and 84th there. So to bounce back with two top 10s, Absolutely awesome Florida swing for Brad Watley. But then I I started looking at the standings and the angler of the year standings, which Trey McKinney is still leading. And I said, by God, I said, Jason Christie had a good Florida swing. Christie starts out with a 73rd at Toledo Bend, a 68th at Lake Fork. Not good finishes for Jason Christie at all. Would not have wanted to be within 10 miles of that guy after that. Then he goes uh, to the classic on grand where there's a ton of pressure. He finishes 17th. So going into this Florida swing, very pivotal in Jason Christie's season off to a poor start. Obviously not this, the finish that he wanted at the Bassmaster classic, but he goes ninth at the Harris chain and seventh at the St. John's river. Not a big deal. Jason Christie back to back top tens happens all the time. So I said, well, I don't, think that Christie is like really known for his Florida finishes. So I went back and I ran the numbers uh, from his BPT days, his FLW tour days uh, and his elite series days. And he has 16 tournaments in Florida. Now, some of these include uh, Lake Okeechobee, but there's a lot of Harris chain in there. There's a lot of St. John's uh, river. There's some Toho stuff in there, but it's Florida. I know the Florida people will be like, Hey, they're all different. You live in Oklahoma, Florida's Florida. So he has 16 tournaments, before these two back-to-back top tens. Uh, He only has one top 10 finish out of those 16. And if you average all of his finishes over the course of his career in Florida, he averages a 55th place finish out of those 16 events in Florida. He has numerous finish. He has a 99th, 138th, 122nd, an 88th, a 63rd, a 50th. So the fact that he was able to go in after uh less than stellar results where he probably expected to smoke him on Toledo Bend and Lake Fork and the classic and then come back with a ninth and a seventh to jump back in to the top 30 in the angler of the year standings a seventh at Harris a ninth at Palaka uh really solid job for Jason Christie to get back on there and then also the exact same thing uh can be said for Greg Hackney it was kind of a what's going on with a Hackney uh, with Hackney this year. You would expect him to have started off on those juggernaut fisheries. He goes 93rd at Toledo Bend, 39th at Lake Fork, bounces back in Florida where he does have a lot of success with a 13th and a 6th uh, to get back on track about the midway through his season. So uh, some really cool stuff going on in the fishing world. Uh as far as the rest of the week for BTL on the 20, 
5th, which is Thursday. I will be at registration for the Bass Cat Owners Tournament on Norfolk Lake. And then I am headed straight from there. We're going to do a live show that evening. Uh, so day four in the morning and then a live show the evening of the 25th. And then I am headed to the fourth Bassmaster Open in Alabama where hopefully the spotted bass uh, will want to play. But stay tuned to BassZone.com updated schedule on that. Let's get the music going here. There it is. And also a big shout out to Miles Berghoff for jumping on. Good to talk about some fishing with him and uh, hear an update from his family. But that's all we got for today, April 22nd, 2024. We'll talk to everybody same place, same time tomorrow. Later.